All right, hello world. Welcome to the stream. Starting to get better at looking at the camera. Uh, hope you all are doing good. We're uh, kicking it off now, I guess. Uh, still need to work on intros for these things, I guess. Um, you can see what day it is. I don't know if I should keep that up there. It makes it, originally I put that there for, to make it easier for me to see what was going on, but I kind of like the idea of these not having a date associated with them. So maybe we'll take those out. Um, uh, so tonight we're going to do a couple things, uh, at least a couple things. Um, the, the two things I've got on the plate are, um, I want to add CSS to Hugo's, uh, short code that it uses for YouTube. Um, and what I mean by that is if we look at this page, uh, I, I put two, this is the stream notes from the other night. I put two YouTube videos up here and you can see that they're both, both mushed together. Um, which one was it? This one. And you see, so here's the source code of the page. Um, and like I could, you know, whatever, break, break, do this and it would put some space in there for me. But I don't wanna to have to do that. I wanna I want to tackle that with uh, CSS. But when I first started looking into it, you, uh, if you look at the source of this, I'll show you in a minute, it doesn't really have a good way to do that. And we'll walk through that in a minute. Uh, and the other thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna keep playing with Django a little bit. Um, I did the install, I started walking through the tutorial, got kind of frustrated with the tutorial. Uh, but we'll we'll continue that tutorial, kind of walk through it, um, and see how far we get. And uh, if we make it to the end, actually maybe put some stuff up on a page and kind of play around with it, just uh, to to make progress on that. The the goal there, the long term goal, is I'm going to replace my Launchpad site, um, which is my lo it's just a local website uh, that I run through Mamp with a Django site, because um, right now this Launchpad is just a bunch of raw PHP pages. And I'd rather have a framework underneath of it. And also there's some things with Django, like, um, you know, I've got my Twitch ideas list here. I edit this page manually by hand all the time, right? So that's, I mean, I can do it, but I'd rather have a web interface to do it and a framework underneath it to do it. Um, and I, there's probably some other stuff that we can do. I'm also curious to see if it's easier for me to trigger external processes through Django than it was through the PHP, like if that server setup somehow works better. Um, uh, and so we'll make some progress on that too. Uh, but so the first thing, we're gonna try these uh, these short codes. And I played around with this a little bit earlier, so um, I've got a little bit of a head start on this. Um, but what we're gonna do... All right, so that's running, cool. Uh, let's get back into that page. So here's our page. Uh, it's this one. So if we look at the source code for the page, uh, gonna make that bigger. Yeah, that's probably big enough. Uh, we'll find down here somewhere. There's my edit button. Here's the YouTube. And we'll pull one of these out. Uh, yeah, so we'll just break this here so we can see it. Break it here so we can see it. Break that here, whatever. Um, I go on HTML. So this is fine, but except for the fact that there's no class associated with it. It's just a straight style. And if we look back at the source, there's nothing surrounding this. So I don't have a CSS selector to basically go and say, target this particular thing. Like I could do it with the iframe, but I really wanna do the div. And also there's a possibility that there may be other things that I frame on the site, who knows. 
Uh, but the but the div is really where I want to put the class. And so where I started looking was uh, Hugo shortcodes. Oh, this page looks really different when the giant font. Um, oh, you, sh you call short codes within other short codes by creating your own templates that leverage the parent variable. Okay, didn't know that. Uh, cool. There we go. Me too. So there's a built-in. So this this short code is built in, and short codes in Hugo are basically just these, you know, little snippets this that you do that just, you know, you give it a uh, kind of a name and then some parameters sometimes, I mean, I guess you don't have to, um, but in this case it's YouTube and then the, the ID of the video. And when Hugo's building the site, it processes that and, you know, translates that into this. Um, in this case, it was, you know, this, this one goes into this and you can see here's the parameter that we passed, the ID. I've made a couple myself. I use an image one that I made, and you store that. Uh, you can store it in a couple places, and the place that I store it is... Nope. Uh, the place where I store mine is, so if this is the site root, layouts, short codes, and then image and image two. These are two that I made. Um, so this is one that I made that does responsive images. You can also store them under themes, your theme name, layouts. You could put a short code directory here and put it in there. But I actually like having these things associated outside of the theme, because that way I can change the theme of my site and still have the short code have effect. Um, I don't want to have to redo this necessarily, um, assuming it works with the theme, etc. But I just I like the idea of that separation um, of of things. So that's where I put mine is up at this root level. But there is no YouTube one up here, um, and there is I've kicked around. There isn't a YouTube one that's visible anywhere in here. The YouTube one is built into Hugo in terms of it like it's super built into Hugo. So. The thing that I was wondering is, can you override it? Um, and the short answer is yes. Um, and so you can put a, uh, a a piece of code in either one of those locations uh, that's called YouTube.html, and it'll override it. The thing that I wanted to look at before I did that was... Hang on, let me see if I can find it. Uh, so I looked up, see if it's still in here. GitHub, Hugo YouTube. So I kicked around and what I found was for the source code of Hugo, here are the embed shortcode templates, and here is the YouTube template. So this is actually what the process is. And I wanted to look this up because if I was gonna make my own shortcode, I wanna make sure that I've got kind of an idea of what it is. Now I could pretty easily just copy, um, copy this, make some changes, and then uh, fire it through uh, and, and have it go, but I really wanted to see what the source code was. And something that's interesting is it actually has this with class and then class equals and then else and it goes into the style. So the thing that I figured out, it, there's nothing about that in the documentation, but because the documentation right over here, just that, and let's actually link directly to that. Um, So here's to embed, and you can embed with autoplay, but it doesn't tell you anything about having the capability to do, um, there we go, uh, a class assignment to it. But we saw that in the source code, and we can prove that by finding this. And so when you give it 
a named parameter, as we see here with this autoplay true, you actually have to name both parameters. So we need to switch this to ID equals that. And then actually we can do the autoplay one just to watch it go autoplay. Where are we? Over here. So this should start autoplaying. There it goes. Yeah, so that one's moving. Stop. And again, what the documentation doesn't have, class equals my class. So now when this rebuilds, one thing you'll notice is there is no style a, a, applied to it. So this is just the default that happens if you make a call to the uh, um, to the iframe without anything happening. Uh, let's squint inspect directly on that. No. So we'll find that here real quick. Here's my class. See, it doesn't like it strips everything out. So that style sheet that or that's those inline styles that were in the div are gone and the style associated with the iframe is gone. Um, Cause the, so here's source, blah, 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 blah. Autoplay is true. Do that. Um, again, if not class, throw these styles out there. Um, so you can, you can send a class to it, but then you'd have to apply the whole class yourself, which isn't a big deal. But like the other thing is I really don't want to have to type. So I could, I could do this and then just straight apply the classes to it and be fine. But I don't want to have to type all that stuff out every time, even though I use, so I actually use a, uh, a shortcut to do it. And I could very easily update the shortcut to be ID equals whatever and all that other stuff. I'd rather have this much code than that much code. So we're back to, um, to updating the short, short code and overriding the built-in because it's not somewhere we can edit, so we've got to override it. Um, and I was playing around with it and, and you can absolutely override it. Um, so let's see if we can find a window here that's active. Let's close that. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna paste it in, and then I'm gonna type an H1 here, here, the whatever. Only reason I'm, or the reason I'm doing this is I want to see if my short code gets fired, and so this is gonna put a giant here um, above the video if it works, and so we're gonna save that. And again, I'm gonna go into yeah, layouts, short codes, and we're gonna call it youtube.html. And now we're gonna take a look at our page. There's a giant here. Oh, I didn't take the class out, did I? Uh, where is this? Yeah, let's get rid of all that junk because I want to. Uh, And now it should come back up. There's our here. Here's our properly sized thing. And and that all the source code for doing the response. So this is the responsive YouTube uh, embed. So I didn't come up with this. Again, this is built in. So the built in drops all this stuff in and it works. I don't know how they got to padding bottom 56.25%. Uh, whatever. Um, all I know is like all this stuff on everything that I've tested works for making a responsive video size. Uh, it kind of surprises me actually that with some amount of padding on the div, it doesn't pad like it, like they're all mushed together. Um, but that's what we're going to try and fix. So we know that we're in the short code now, right? We've got it. And so now it's just a matter of, uh, I don't want to apply a class and have inline styles. So I'm going to make a new class and a new style and then put those in. Um, and this is where you guys get to see me or y'all get to see me stumble through CSS, um, which is not my strong suit, but we'll figure it out. Uh, so we can drop here because we know we know that we're in there. Um, 
And then... So we've got our class here. And so let's actually go ahead and edit this down. Class YouTube. And because this is specific to YouTube, I'm not going to make it generic. Embed. And then for a minute, I'm going to take all this stuff out. Right? So there's our div. Here's our iframe with our source. I'm gonna leave the autoplay in there in case I wanna do the autoplay stuff. But we're gonna drop this out. And so I could, I can, I can address this iframe uh, from, from inside the div. Title, allow full screen. So that's where that ends. All right, now I'm just gonna fire this up and look at it and just see where all the, uh, all the nonsense is. So we remember div, oops, I frame. Oops. I broke some, oh, there's an end there. Ah, uh, crap. Okay, we're just gonna back all the way out. Undo back to beginning of time. Is that gonna work? Nope. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's, I know what's going on. All right. With class else, it's that end. We're just gonna do it this way. Div class YouTube. Spell it right. Still alive. Oh, that's kind of crazy. What's going on there? Maybe because the frame is has some sizing stuff on it that all that stuff is happening. Yeah, okay. So let's just put this back together piece by piece. I frame. So it's weird. Should have done this earlier. Did not do this earlier. There we go. Here, we're here. Paste. Okay, cool. Ready? We're gonna see it all happen again. There we go. That's our start. We know that we're in there. So what I should have done is this. Because now we can make this edit. So class equals YouTube video or YouTube video. That's cool. Is 
Is that where it jumps up? Okay, so that makes it jump up because the iframe has some craziness going on to it. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to see is actually... I'm not seeing a close quote on the iframe source. It's certainly there, and I think this is just straight from the source. Styles. With get autoplay, if equals true. Oh, 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 okay. So you send autoplay to, as part of the URL. I understand what's going on there. And then, so there's the end of the quote. So that's the source. And that's all the class stuff. Okay, I'm with you. So whitespace can do this. If we got autoplay, and if equals true, which I guess true is if it exists. Here's our style. Allow full screen, right. Now I should see the video twice. Oh, uh, right. So let's actually start addressing this. Let's see, themes, assets, SCSS, that. I'm just gonna put this in my AWS one. Um, oh, interesting. I've got some iframe stuff going on there. I don't know what that does. So it's this class. And what we want is all this noise. I think, right? Cause we're just moving the inline style out to the class itself. So there's one, there's two. Nice. And then, so that's our source, right? And all of that is the iframe. Yep, so that mushes the iframe down. Oh, interesting, it puts a lot of space there too. So now we can come back here. Style, let's grab all this. Yeah, and again, I'm kind of doing the stay one step away from green thing where I'm keeping my, I'm keeping that version of the div working and then working on another one. Uh, so I can always fall back to it if I need to. Whoops, we're gonna want iframe right here, I think. And let's see what happens there. I got it. So there's our basic styles. Uh, and now we just need to do our bump. So I don't, it makes me nervous though. Cause like, shouldn't that have worked? The answer is no. See, this is where this does. I should have done it like 40 or 50 just to make sure it was like super visible or super not. I didn't see a change. It didn't update. There we go. Yeah, so we can just add a straight margin to it. Uh, oh, 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 right. 
it's only the second one that's doing it, because I've, I've still got both of them in here. Right, I'm repeating it twice. So let's take that out of the mix for a minute. There we go. That does it. That's got it. And so like you could do some other stuff if you wanted to, like if you wanted to put a put it in a figure or like a caption or whatever and have just like a little thing underneath it. Um, you could roll that in so that you could do, uh, you know, you do ID equals that caption equals whatever. Um, and then have that output or whatever. Uh, but for me, like this is good. That's all I really wanted to have happen. Um, just get that, uh, get that little padding on there. Sweet. Uh, so we can close that. I'll leave this open. Actually, I guess what we can do, where's my, Oh yeah, source. Yeah, I don't want to have to do this every time. See, this is something where I want to get uh, a button so that I can just grab URLs from Safari and throw them into uh, into the stream notes. Because um, right now I I built this little thing, uh, which is I really like. Where's it put its output? Oh yeah, link details. Um, so Python. So our URL puller. Now there's the two uh, links that were uh, the uh, two tabs that were open. Uh, so, ooh, I could actually put the links here. That just makes my life easier. Uh, is that right? YouTube master. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a poor title. I'll fix that later. Uh, I'm going to pin that. I might have already pinned it. Let's see. Yep, Hugo. Save three hours ago. And I'm pretty sure I've got this pinned. I think I've got the top level pinned, not the other one. Cool. Okay. So that's that. Uh, where am I going? Nope. Yep. I've read some stuff, yeah. Add padding to YouTube short code. Cool. I don't care that I'm putting um, stream notes and stuff in there with the commits. Like, I'm not worried about having that sectioned off. All right, cool. So that's got that. Now we'll go play with Django. Let's see, what time are we? 30 minutes, 29 minutes. Playing with Django. Uh, all right, so first thing, find Django. Um, I put it in my root or in my home directory. Django, October 3rd, that's looking positive. Why is there a virtual environment up there? Oh yeah, it wants you to do a virtual environment. That's cool. Um, whoops. Let's go find Django, get started. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Take the tutorial. 
So we were on part three. Can we get to part three easily? Contents, browse, table of contents. You are here. Look at that. Everything you need to know about Django. Um, are you new to programming? To Django programming. This is place to start. Wait. That was weird. All right. So let's see. Overview. View is a type of web page in Django. For example, in a blog application, you might have the following views. Blog homepage, entry, year-based archive, month-based archive, day-based archive, comment action. And our poll, yeah, we're making a poll application. Um, I guess the first thing I can do is fire this up, right? Yeah, so we're making polls, which again, I don't think is a good, like it shouldn't have been the first thing to me when you're first getting in there. Excuse me. Uh, where am I going? Here. All right, in a poll application, we'll have the following four views. Questions index page. See, again, this is where it's like, this is too complicated for a first run through. It should just be like, you have a page. Here's a single view. Question detail page, question results page, vote action. Web pages and other content are delivered by views. Each view is represented by a Python function or method in the case of class based views. Django will choose a view by examining the URL it's requested, to be precise, the part of the URL after the domain name. Right. On our time on the web, we come across such beauties as all that junk. Django's better than that. The URL pattern looks like that. To get a URL from review, Django just uses what are known as URL comps. URL comp maps URL patterns to views. Okay. Now let's add a few more polls views. These are slightly different because they take arguments. And again, why are we just throwing all this stuff in there? Like I don't have a good understanding of what's going on already and you're just making me throw a bunch of code in there. I am going to keep being frustrated with this tutorial. Uh, polls views, all right. And let's see if the other thing that I am concerned about happens. Polls views, do I keep this stuff? With, pull, with the, these new module, add the following to your path. Yeah, so I guess I just stick it down below the index. Seems legit. It's not explicit though. Uh, with these new modules, add the following path calls. I mean, it's gobbledygook to me. It'll make sense once I know it, but I don't know it. That's why I'm here and it ain't helping. URL patterns, okay. So, views names index. Views name, and this is in polls URLs, polls URLs. Pulls URLs, okay. So I wanna keep that one. Okay, so this is the full file, I think. So we're just gonna copy and paste. You should add these one at a time, showing explicitly what's going on. Take on your browser at polls34. It'll run the detail method and display whatever ID you provide in the URL. Try that or that too. These will display placeholder results for voting pages. Uh, I forgot how to serve it. Uh, 
Oh, I don't have any Django notes. I think those are all archived. I feel like I definitely had some. Data added 2016. Yeah, so I was messing with it in 2016. Yeah, four years ago. Uh, built in views. How do you deploy it? Or how do you start it up? Doing a version. I go admin, start the project, manage run server, okay. I figured it out pretty quickly, but notes are notes, and that's what you do with them. Yeah, and also, why don't we make an index page first? Imagine that. Uh, okay, we can close that one. So it wants us to try this. Or actually, I guess it wants us to try this first. Looking at question 34. Uh, it's interesting. Like if you put a, if you accidentally put two slashes in there, it definitely fails. Which that's that's fine. I'm not angry about that. Results. Still don't really have any idea of what's going on. You're looking at the results for questions. Did I build these pages? How's it doing this? I was a little tired last time, but... Oh, we threw all this stuff in. Okay. But wait. See, I did that a tutorial ago, and I completely forgot about this, and I have no connection or tie into it right now. I'm gonna have to make my own tutorial to teach myself how to actually do this stuff. When somebody requests a page from your website, say Pulse34, Django loads my site URLs. Because it's pointed to by root comp URL. It finds the variable URL patterns, it traverses patterns in order. After finding the polls, it strips off the polls, sends it to 34, polls URL. Pulse comfort that are processing. Int question ID, like there it matches int question ID. Where? In what file? Here, I guess. Weird syntax. I mean, I guess it's an integer, so whatever, but. Oh, wait, int question ID. Let's see if we can actually figure this out. Oh, okay. So again, I've, I've been removed from that by having to jump through this. Like, ah, eh, whatever, that one's kind of okay. Resulting in a call to detail, like so. Detail, if you use details. Question ID 34 part comes from that. Using angle brackets captures the part of the URL and sends it the Hebrew argument. Okay. I don't totally understand. Like, yeah, I'm gonna have to do one of these myself just to figure it out. Right views to actually do something, you should be responsible for doing two things. Returning an HTTP response object 
but raise an exception. The rest is up to you. Directors from a database or not. Tempest instance of Django's third-party system or not. Generate PDF. Use one. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All Django wants is that response or an exception. Let's use Django as a database API. We've covered in tutorial two. There's one step in a new index view, which will display the latest five poll questions in the system, separated by commas according to publication date. Okay. See, this is nice. All right, polls views. So that, we're gonna add this. We're gonna change this to all this. We're just gonna drop it in without really knowing what's going on. Latest question, question objects ordered by five output, comma, join for all the questions, lists. Yeah, I hope you uh, know a little bit about coding before you get into this. There's a problem here though, the page design is hard coded in the view. Let's use Django template system to separate design from Python by creating a template that the view can use. Well, what have I been doing with this? First, create a directory called templates. Django will look. I just did code, and now I'm going to do something else before I see what that code did. Okay, first create a directory called templates in your polls. Okay. Django will look for templates there. Roger that. New folder. Templates. Oops. Your projects templates setting describes how Django will load and render templates. The default setting for your Django shows backend. Use apters, option is set for true by Default Django looks in template subdirectory in each of the installed apps. Not information I need right now. Within the templates directory we've just created, create another directory called pulls. And with that, an index on HTML. In other words, template should be pulls, templates, pulls, index. Because of how directory, app directory's template loader works, as described above, you can refer to this with pulls index. Okay, polls, templates, polls, index. So we got polls, we're at templates, we're gonna make polls. And then now we're gonna make an index file. Yo. My site, polls, templates, polls index html template namespacing probably something else we don't need to know about right now now we might be able to get away with putting our templates directly in pulls templates rather than creating a pull subdirectory but it's actually a bad idea Django chooses the first name which matches any other thing different directory Django will be unable to distinguish between them So I would just say to the newbies, this is just, be, you need to do it this way because of the way the system works. And just leave it at that. You can explain all this stuff and advanced stuff later. Like just do it this way. And then if you're advanced enough to not do it that way or you don't do it that way, it's on you. Like go look at the docs at that point. I'm normally not this frustrated by things. Not that I'm that frustrated, but it's like, yeah, I said in the other stream, I, I went through this tutorial before and I had the same stuff and it's just like, I don't know. It, it's not designed for me, I guess is the trick. And I try and 
so I'm new to this, basically. I mean, I did it a while ago, but like, I'm still having a hard time conceiving of what's going on. And I've done it before a few years ago, and I kind of know what I'm doing with programming. So I wonder if they're losing out on people because of this, right? Which is a shame, because I kind of like it. I mean, I think I like it. All right, put the following code in that template. So again, I want to walk through this. To make the tutorial short, shorter, all templates use incomplete HTML. You should use complete HTML. Okay, yeah, whatever. Let's update our index view and the polls view by using the templates. Wait a minute. Yeah, so we updated this page. Didn't look at it at all. Did some other work. Go back and change it again. Don't do that. All right. Back to views. I'm just, can we copy all of it? Oh, but they didn't say, they didn't leave us a note again saying leave the rest of it the same. But I think we just need to do this, right? Probably. Wait a minute. Oh, template, loader, get template. Okay, that's what changed. And then this template render. It's a lot of code with no explanation. I'm just gonna keep railing on this. That code loads a template called polls index, right? Polls index, yes. The context is a directory mapping template variable names to objects. Okay, I like that they're named the same. Didn't really explain what this was earlier. I mean, you can guess, right? But uh, maybe that was in all the stuff they were trying to show you in the command line, but still not good. A shortcut render is very common idiom and template. The context of range HTML, dynamic process shortcut. Here's the full index view rewritten. So we've changed it. This is the third time we've changed it. Still haven't looked at it. Oops, hang on. Why do I feel like that's not gonna work? This HTTP response? So hang on a second. Yeah, so this one has HTTP response in it with template loader. This one doesn't, it just went straight to render. I'm suspicious, but we'll see what happens. Now that we've done all that, we no longer need load an HTTP response, okay. You want to keep HTTP response if you still have the stub methods for detail of your results, which we do. But maybe those will explode later and we'll see what's going on. Render function takes a request object as the first argument, template the second, and dictionary is the third, returns the response object. So here's our render. Oh yeah, this is gonna explode, right? So they just told me to make a change that's actually going to explode. Why didn't we start here? Render function takes a request object as its first thing, okay. I don't really know what that is. Whatever. Now let's tackle the question detail view. Still haven't looked at a page. If 
Pages of this place. Okay. New concept here. If he raises a 404 exception of the question and doesn't exist. We'll discuss what you could put in that pulls details template a bit later. But if you'd like to quickly get the above example working, a file containing just that. We'll get you started for now. <laughs> All right, so now we need to add this render we've got, models we keep, Place details with all this without any understanding of what's going on. Oh, it's got to try and erase. Okay. Wouldn't you want to have a try and erase for everything? In order to get this to work, we need to go here, pulls templates, details, HTML. All right. Shortcut, get object or HTML. Oh my God, it's very common to use that and that for, for getting a 404. Here's a detail re... So... <sighs> Same thing. Didn't try it, didn't look at it, just changing it. And that should have been here. Why do you use a helper function instead of automatically catching the, the exceptions at a higher level or having the API raise 404? Because that would couple the models later to the view level. One of the foremost goals of Django. Don't need any of this information right now. There's also a list 404 function what's worth which works is except using filter and get instead of get. Raises four or four if the list is empty. Okay. Using the template system. Still haven't looked at any pages. Back in the detail view of our pulling application. In the detail view, right? Is this the template? Okay. Here's what DPL looks template might look like. So again, we're gonna change it without having looked at it. I'm just gonna start burning through this because like I'm gonna have to redo all this stuff to figure out what's actually happening. Temple Suits uses dot lookup syntax access variable attributes. An example, something question dot question text. Okay, so first it looks at the object. It tries an attribute lookup, which works in this case. If the attribute lookup failed, hat wear, that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Method calling happens in the for loop. Choice, question, choice set all. This interpreted as a Python code question choice at all, which returns iterable choice objects. No real idea there either. I don't even know where these files are anymore. Uh, models? Is that in models? What are we in questions? Here's a choice. Okay. something real quick. Stand by. I want to see 
if uh, where's my grimoire? Where is it? Uh, that's bad. There it is. Archive. Django. I do have some Django notes. Get rid of this for a second. Bring our Django notes back in. made some Django notes. So that'll help us actually start going through and looking at some of the stuff for real. All right, let's just burn through this. Remember when I wrote the link to question and polls index HTML template? Nope, I don't remember that at all. The link was partially hard coded like this. Problem with this hard coding, tightly coupled approach, this becomes challenging to URLs. However, since you define the name already in the path, packs, pat, pulls URLs module, you can remove the reliance on specific URLs. Why did we do it in the first place? Some of these Python Django web framework full course for beginners. Free code camp. I'll look at that. I'll look at some of the hey. <coughs> I still might make my own little one just to I'll, I'll kind of watch these a little bit and they'll probably be enough, but like I'll just read the tutorials. Let's do it together. Still committed to this one. I just want to plot through. How many sections are there to tell us? Table of contents. One, two, three, four, five, six. What to read next? Advanced tutorial. Tutorial. One, three, four, four. Removing hardcoded URLs. Name spacing URLs. Writing your first Django app. Part four. Write a minimal form. Use generic. Let's code better. I kind of want to, like, this is a waste of time. Yeah, this is a waste of time. I'll, I'll go bounce around on this stuff myself, but like, there's no, I'm not learning anything from this tutorial. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to bounce around looking at other tutorials trying to find something. I figured the official one and the official walkthrough would be all right, but like making three changes to a file without looking at it once and having them be like five or six things in each change. No, 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 no. Um, so bail, uh, bailed. Not worth the frustration. And nothing is sinking in. So, whatever. Um, bye bye.
Oops, that's the wrong thing. And it sucks, because I kind of want to get to that. Um, like, I would, I would like to make these lists part of Django's things, and I feel like that... If that tutorial was done as, like, here's step A, here's step B, and we're going to just, like, get you as fast as possible to a working thing, I could have then gone back and then said, okay, now we're going to go back and we're going to look at all these detailed things. Like, I could have taken what you learned in that first little bit and then just made it happen. Um, but I don't want to sit here, like, I don't think it would be good for a stream for me to just sit here and kind of bang that out a little bit. Because um, I, I just... I have no grounding in what it is right now. Um, so let's see what else. Um, all right, so we did that. Uh, I could store the screenshots, script new photos, the NAS. I right, process the logs a number of tabs. You have to open and analyze them over time. Uh, no, I forgot why Facebook, no. Temperature forecast from site. I don't really know what I want to do. Uh, write your Django. Yeah. Write your own Django install in basic tutorial. Alright, I just need to pick one and go. Um, so we'll do we'll do this one. Uh, write a process to automatically sort screenshots into the main directory structure. So what that means is finder. There it is. Whoops. What's going on? Hello. There it is. Keeps going over there. So I take a bunch of screenshots. Here's my current screenshot directory with 5,536 files in it. There are other archive directories as well. <laughs> Take a lot of screenshots. Um, so the question, and so, uh, where is photos? Everything's changed, pictures. So I've got a directory structure that I set up a long time ago. That's my core directory structure for how I store photos. Um, and it's this four digit year, two digit dash, three letter month, and then two digit with leading zero uh, day. And then, uh, hang on one second. I just want to look at this picture to see what it is. I can't imagine it's anything bad, but. Yeah, it's like, that's my niece, so you don't need to see that. I mean, whatever, she's cool, but. Uh, here, let me find one. So here's a screenshot from Animal Crossing. Um, and here's the file naming convention. So it's kind of the same thing with four digit year, Two digit month with leading zero, two digit day with leading zero, dash dash, hour, two digit hour, two digit minute. I didn't want to put the seconds in there because it looked kind of weird, and I still needed a way to have a separation between uh, multiple images coming down at the same second. So I just drop the seconds and I just do this 01A. Uh, the 01 increments if multiples happen in the same minute, and then the A is there just as a, um, as a, stub for A means raw, B could be like a different crop of the photo or a different uh, color toning or whatever. Um, so that's that's the structure. Um, I didn't need to do that. Uh, but so what I want to do is move the screenshots into the same structure. And it is quite possible. So I guess I should look at these screenshots to see what's going on with them first. Um, I'm sure that was fine. Uh, so let's open one of these. The thing I'm wondering 
yeah, could not open screenshot in Photoshop, and I'm in Photoshop, whatever. Uh, yeah, I ran out of space earlier, so I want to see what the file info is here, because I'm curious. Oh, actually, you know what we should look at? is, so I'm gonna copy this and we're gonna move this just to the desktop for now. Oh, you know what I should do? Uh, about Whatever. Finder, here, here, there we go, we got it. So we're on the desktop. I wanna see, first thing I wanna see is if there's EXIF data in here. So desktop. So EXIF tool, and then, which you can install, I think via brew. Oh yeah, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. So I, I have this script that imports my photos, which are a lot, you know, they're just images, a lot like screenshots, um, into that directory structure. And so one option would be to just have that script run, or I could just run that script to do the process. But I, in order to do that, I'd kind of have to change the way it's configured because the the script really kind of has a specific output location that it goes to. And then the other trick is what I'd really like to have happen is the photos, or sorry, the screenshots move as soon as the screenshot happens. Um, and so what I'm thinking I'll do is build a little script that runs this process. And I need to do it in a way, I guess I need to do Python 2. I, do, I need to do whatever the system Python is. No, I can use, I can use Python 3, because I, I don't want to have a virtual environment. And the reason I don't want to have a virtual environment is I want to launch this thing with a launch D script. And I can set the launch D script to just watch the source folder. And when something hits the source folder, it gets processed and moved in to the specific function, the specific layout, the uh, whatever. Um, And so what I'm going to do I'm going to do this in the toolkit, which is where I'm starting to put all my stuff now. Like it's a new I'm, stuff has kind of been all, all over the place, so it's like we're going to refocus now and only move into here what we what we want to have that's new. Um, part of that's cuz I have a whole bunch of stuff that was for my old job that's all intermixed with my old locations. And so now it's like, hey, okay, new thing, let's do it and start over. Um, so Safari URL puller is in there. I like that one, that's good. That's what we're using to get all the names that we just ran. Um, get, oh, spacebar is jacked. Get init, naming is hard. Um, screenshot, renamer. Work. Um, that got louder. I guess it should be one word.
Okay, so this actually is only going to... Uh, process, screenshot, directory, move image, rename and move images. All right, so I'm not gonna get too complicated on this to start with. Um, where's toolkit? Toolkit, screenshot renamer. Right, which Python three. Okay, these are local bend. Which, if it's in local, is that really system? I don't know. Trigger the script with LaunchD. We can also run it manually, um, but it shouldn't have to, right? Because every time it sees a change, uh, it should go. Um, actually, one thing I want to look for is is LaunchD watch folder recursive. I just this just occurred to me on our folder contents with LaunchD. Our watch is not triggered by subfolder changes. The folder I'm trying to watch is a few hundred megabytes, small web files. So the best you can do is watch singles director activities, discuss in detail. ZL2 homebrew FS watch. Yeah, you could use FS watch, okay. So what is the, it's actually good. I don't want it to recurse um, because I'm gonna store, so like inside, inside screenshots, which I've set up specifically, um, I'm just gonna have like archive, or actually I guess what I could do I just want to think through a little bit about the, <coughs> excuse me, the mechanics before I really kind of start coding. So I want to have, I want to have a real clear idea of what's going to happen or as clear as I can have. And so I think what I want to do, I'm going to build this on the desktop to start with. Actually, we could do it inside the project folder. Probably makes a lot more sense. Uh, which is somewhere close to. Oh, never been there before. There we go. Whatever. So, screenshots. And then we would have incoming and then we would just have actually we do this just so it's up top so you can watch it um and then the structure would be like 2020 uh 10 oct 5 file at 1 11 29 p.m yeah this is actually one of the things that's frustrating and makes me 
want to do this is when you're looking at the directory of screenshots, it goes 1, 10, 11, 12, 2. Uh, it does the that number sort. Um, but so what we'd have is AWS, oops, I guess we could do this. AWS, I think it's two dashes. I, I'll get it. Look it up in a minute, yeah. And then so 01 is 13, 11, Two dashes there too. The one a ping. Where did our photograph go? Did I copy a photo out? I didn't, did I? Uh, photos, photos, photos. Where are my photos? My photos are in photos. Oh wait, yeah, I did. Where'd it go? I'm just throwing stuff around right now just to I'll, I want to have all the stuff that I need to have uh, oh okay so it's a single dash actually 2028 uh, I knew there's a double dash in there but I reverse the doubles and the singles And really the only reason for the, like, I just like the way that looks. So I can read that easily. Um, so where's this? Five, since that's the thing. 2020, 10, 5, all that jazz. Okay. There we go. I can get rid of this. Okay. Uh, let's do it in PyCharm. that actually I don't know if my that was my scratch pad or not whatever uh, new project can we target a new project on a new directory um, here this is the first time I've done this with the Oh, okay. So that's how you can do that. Use your in Python. Okay, that's what we want. Base interpreter, Python executable. Okay, cool. We're not going to do a main. And can we just write this into an existing that thing? No. Python executable is not found. What? Bin Python 3. Oh, it's got a question mark by it. Why does it have a question mark by it? Drag and drop. Hmm, interesting. Uh, 
I want to use that. Why can't I use that? I don't want to make a virtual environment. Base interpreter is right there. Executable. Oh, Pippin. I don't know what Pippin V is. Pip environment. Aims would bring the best of all packaging worlds, bundler, all that jazz to Python. Windows is a first class citizen in our world, okay. Automatically cremate and manage rituals. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna run Python. Can I not just run Python? Oh, existing interpreter. Oh, uh, okay, wait, 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 hang on. System, there we go, okay. Uh, three, seven, sure. I gotcha, okay. It's like, surely there has to be a way to do that. Director is not empty. Empty. Do you want to create a project from existing sources? Yes, I think. Do you want to add the following to get? Yes. Remember, don't ask. Uh, I'll add them individually for now. Oh, you know what? User bin EMV. Oops, 3.7. Let me just make sure we're working. Everybody cool. Oh, run in the Python console. Where's my other run stuff? Oh, there it is. Okay, that was super weird. Here, cool. All right, so I'm trying to think how to get my teeth into this. Um, we're gonna make a test file. Oh, I should have done this earlier. Um, I, actually, let's do this. Uh, oh, did I put it in there? Sorry, pull everything Yeah, okay, got it. All right, so we're gonna import unit to air. Actually, let's do this. User bin, environment, Python 3.7, import, whoops. Unit test. Import rename screenshots. Uh, if name main unit test main. Okay. Unit test now uh, class. Start with test. No. Renamer tests tests classes unit test test case. Uh, tone test self self. Or equal one one. I just want to run it, make sure things are hunky dory. Uh, empty test suite. Things ran. Zero test ran. Why? Did, oh, because it's got to be test. See? Step by step. One test ran. Okay, cool. So now I need to get. I'm going to start at the end, which is getting a file path. 
Um, final file path. Uh, and so target. Hmm. I need to do this. Not final relative file path. Actual uh, self sort equal target. Oh, expected. That's what I should use. passed so my expected path uh, we'll just use that one as for relativeness is that that this and then that and then actual to start with, we're just gonna paste directly in, make sure the tests run, excuse me, one test passed. Now actual is gonna be rename screenshots, get final relative path. We're just gonna blow up because it's not there, right? So now we go make that def get final relative path uh, path equals that return path so we should get a different error oops yeah, it has failed but now if we just throw this back at it failing. We goof somewhere. Oh, uh, we called it wrong. Uh, that's why we test it like this. There we go. One test passed. Okay, so we got it. Okay, so now what we want to do is what? Um... We know our target, but now we need to start with data from EXIF tool. We need to know what that format's gonna be. I guess I could put this where you can see it all. First question is where are we gonna get the data from? And there's all kinds of dates. I don't wanna use file accessed or modified. Ooh, but see, that's the only thing that's in there. See, I don't like that because the access or modified or created, like if it gets moved on the file system, that can change. Like those, those will change. Um, so we don't want to use that, and there's not another date in here. Oh, wait. Profile date. Nope. Uh, profile date time. I don't trust that. That doesn't sound right.
Possible to know the ICC profile date, time of a screenshot, uploaded on Instagram by another iPhone user. Somebody's trying to stalk. Wait, did that just happen four days ago? Yeah. Profile date mean. It's taken on the smartphone and sent to me, not taken from Facebook. I view the EXIF data. There's that. What is the date? Is that when the date's taken? If not, how can it be mistaken? Yeah, so is the date and time the ICC profile used for the image was first created? For example, my scanner inserts the same profile date for each image from 2006. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, so I don't trust that, can't use that. Like it may only be when you open the file or like, yeah, because it, it's also different 12.25.01 is different from all of those times. Um, so we're not gonna use that, but that's okay because we have a file name that we can use. Um, and this is this is actually interesting. I was, so I was wondering earlier if I could use my existing script. I wouldn't wanna use my existing script on these because it would fall back to the file modified and, and access time. And I don't wanna use those, I don't trust them. Um, even though I think I use them for some of my photo stuff, but. I should go back and look at that actually and take that out. Um, so anyways, but now what we can do, now we know what we wanna do is use uh, a source screenshot file name, which I took out, be right back. Oops, come here. I just want a benign screenshot. Uh... All right. So here's a base screenshot name. And this actually isn't too bad because it has a one digit thing and a one digit thing. Uh... But so we can use, we just want to use this as our source. And so really this is good. We don't have to use the XIF tool. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to pass this string uh, to my get final relative path. Now this is going to fail, but that's okay. Cause we know that that's going to fail because uh, I just sent an argument and wasn't expecting an argument. That's fine. So, um, Original name. Now, it should, whoops, let's do that. So we're passing again. And now we can start doing the actual work here to process. So we've got a, we got a good test. We're, we're, we're passing the thing in that we need and we're spitting the thing out that we need. So now it's just a matter of doing the work to actually have the program spit out the thing instead of just hard coding it. So uh, let's just see what, actually, uh, I got it here, right? So just looking at this, the thing that we should be able to do is just do a regex to grab this stuff and pull it out and process it. Uh, oh, we're gonna need the AM and the PM too because it's not, it's not uh, military time or whatever you call it. Um, so let's work on that. Hi, regex, regex. Capturing matches sounds like what we want to do. Right, so. We're gonna need regex. And then right here, I'm not gonna compile it. We're just gonna search. So, um, uh, 
update parts. And so for the pattern, I'm actually going to use the whole thing because I want it to uh, I want it to be pretty explicit. So I'm not going to try and do the whole thing right now. Wait, do we have? Yeah, matches. So that's the full match. Just want to see what this does. Error, it exploded. Missing petition alarm and string. Oh, you got to pass the thing to it. Needs to actually have something to match off of. Got it. There's 2020. And so I'm just going to look real quick off screen and see. I'm assuming, or my guess is, that we'll find the screenshots for January have a leading zero because the day there has a leading zero. Oh, I can go back to September. September has it too. So we're actually, we can use one of those. Uh, I'll find one of those later if we need it. Uh, get this one working to start with. So now I'm gonna just start putting parts in. Um, so path equals oops, let's just do this. So I want to keep this one here and then what I want to do is slowly but surely put in the pieces here that I think should work. This way I'm staying one, one away from green. I can always get back to green if something goes sideways. That's that. Oops. Uh, and actually, yeah, I'm gonna keep that there for now. So with luck, this will still pass. Passed. And then I can also put that right. Here. Oh wait, wait, wait. So I want to do this. Ah, I can do it. Yeah, this will be fine. i put in the parts when I see them. I was just thinking I'm going to have to shift this, but that's that's fine. That's part of it. I'm, and this will be easiest to do. Test passed. Uh, and then again, every now and then I like breaking the test on purpose just to see what's happening. And we should see, yeah, here's our expected versus actuals happening. Where does it say that? Somewhere it says expected versus, yeah. Expected, actual, I like that. Cool, so now we're gonna get the month, which is explicitly two of those. Oh, we're gonna have a little work to do. So let's see if we got this to start with. Uh, this. Still passing, still passing. And now we need to make a little map for ourselves. Um, let me do that here, right? Uh, what's the best way to do that? Uh, Month strings equals just that's a list, right? And so we can just populate Jan Feb. So I'm just I'm sticking it so it's zero indexed. So I'm skipping the first one so that Jan becomes one. Um, I 
Are there ISO three digit? Month is a three letter abbreviation. Right month as a three letter. Okay, astronomers have been using format to record observations. In fact, since before computers were invented. Symbol should not be used. There, we actually just go to the 8601 wiki. I don't think. I think last time I did this, I made these myself. I just want to look and see. Uh... Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, so that's fine. Right, so that should be 12. And now, if we do this with this what do we get we get an explosion the senators must be slices integers are slices not strings and this how you do a uh, thing? No, I don't want a dictionary. What do I want a list? Whoops. Data structures. Yeah, it's a list. Based index. Oh, 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 okay. It's seeing these two digits as a string. So can I just int those? Nope. I put October in there. this. There we go. So to do is check with one digit month. I, th I think this integer slams it to a single, you know, removes leading zeros, uh, but we just want to make sure of that. 
Uh, for oh, I grabbed a different thing. So let's sorry. Let's make sure we're working with the right thing before we throw ourselves off here. So this is what we're gonna send in. Oh, oh, okay. We already had that. Where is I getting this five from? This is wrong. I pulled that from a different file. Oops. Okay, we actually get to do some leading zero stuff. That's fine. So. This goes to four, this goes to four. Our test should still be able to pass if we put all this stuff in right. It's actually probably working right now, even though it shouldn't. No, okay. Yeah, okay, so we changed, okay, that's fine. This is fine. I wanna get this lined up right now. So 09501A, 09501A. So we're gonna fail. And then we're gonna get this set up right. So first thing we're gonna do is just straight copy this, because I wanna see this pass real quick, right? Oops. Paste path. All right, now we're going. And so we're in our hard coded. We're in our hard coded area here. So let me get rid of this. I'm gonna pull this up here. So this goes to four, this goes to that, and this goes to four. Should be passing. Passing, okay. Uh, actually, you know what, I'm gonna, uh, I kinda wanna make these a little more explicit. Um, just because it's confusing to look at that. So let's do this one step at a time. There's our years. Leading zero is this. Month without leading zero is this. good it's still good okay and so now we need oh so month so here's another month one two three four five which I think is the last one right Ooh, I keep doing that can you leave a comma at the end you can I'm gonna keep doing that So now we need our day, which is here, which is also two digits. Uh, 
which is going to be part three. So this will be the fourth one. One, two, three, four. How are we doing there? Yep, got it. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is going to be our last one. Sweet. All right, now we get to do a little math, I think. So how do we want to do this? Um, I kind of want to break this out to its own function. First, I'm going to capture these things. So slash D plus, because there could be one or more. Um, so this is single digit 12 hour hour. Single digit AM PM hour. because it could be either AM or PM, and I wanna make sure I've got that explicitly. And that's number four, right? So this is gonna go some nine if I hit this right, right? There's our nine, okay. And then AM, PM. I think it's a meridian indicator, I can't remember. So this is going to be five. No, it's not going to be five. See, I need to get... All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab the minute, which is that two digits. Yes, those are two digits. Okay. Oops. So I need to get to here, but I want to go ahead and grab the thing. I think, can you name things? You probably can, but. So this is two digits. I don't need that. And this is either AM or PM. And actually, all I really need is the A or the P, and I can add the M back here. So first, let me just see if all those things match. Okay, yeah, so I still haven't, because like if I did that, it should explode, because the pattern broke. So, Day with leading zeros, hour. Single digit AM PM. Okay, that's better. I want the name of the thing to be the first thing hour, day, month, year. Um, flag. No, wait, minute, sorry. I need minute with 
beating zero. So that's five. Fifty, sorry, yeah. Yeah, there's our input. It's not really a flag because it's two things, so we're going to do that. Six. And there's our A, because it's AM. Okay, so I've got those things. Now what I want to do is, I don't want to do the logic of flipping the data there. Um, I'm going to throw that to a different, well, so that's, see the trick is that's kind of tightly coupling. I guess I should just do it in this function. Um, it almost feels like that's like I'm adding logic into the logic, um, which I guess what you could really do is suck all the data out. Yeah, you can suck all the data out and then build the path, Wh whatever, it's fine. I'm just trying to think like how I would do this if I was really trying to break things apart and have really loose coupling and all that stuff. So uh, I'm not super worried about it. It's just kind of going through the thought exercise. Um, but what we, no, actually I do want to check that though. I do need to break that out. Um, so, Where'd we go? Tests. Here, get rid of that. Def test time adjustment. Test hour adjustment. Expected. Oops. That's so weird. I don't get that. Actual self sort equals expected actual. Be good. Good. So do I want it back as a string? I probably do. Yeah, I'm gonna want it as a string because I'm gonna need leading zeros. So expect the first one is is zero nine and actual is zero nine. I'm gonna have a couple tests. I need to have one in on the AM and one on the PM. So uh, all right, so this will pass because we're hard coding. And now um, we're gonna call this this format hour. Just get a break because it's not there. It's all good. Ready to get format hour. And then hi format hour. Kind of path, cool. Format hour. Uh, hour string. I do want to identify that's a string. It's going to be a nine. Return. Our string. Test passed. So we got it. And so now we need to send it. How do we want to send it? Um, our 12.
our... Like, what's a good name for this? Um... We've divided 24 hours down in two sections, two halves. Our meridian. No, because meridian's the thing. I guess you could just do hour 12. I'll go with that for now. Hour. Twelve, and then a.m. p.m. So this will explode because we don't have any of that stuff. And so it had leading zeros. A.m. p.m. equals a. Still going to explode because we're not catching parameters. I do want to name this different. 12 o'clock. You know what I want to do? I want to actually make this AM and PM because it's that's more descriptive and it's fine to pass that. We'll work on that in a second. So still not, yeah. So now I pull these in and we should pass because we're just throwing stuff back. Right, cool. Now we can do our work. Uh, so what's the right way to do this? So first, I want to do what? What's the best way to start this? Um, so I just need to get this. Our string equals our 12 clock, right? That's actually going to pass because we're just passing in 09, we're getting 09 back. So that's it, okay, that's the first thing. Um, I'm not gonna do any more work yet because I don't need to uh, until I have another test that guides me. Which is gonna be this test. PM. Expected 16, 12 hour clock is 04, and that's PM. This is gonna explode. Yep, four is not equal to 16. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this so we can keep that test alive. And I'm going to call this dev. And I'm going to point this to dev. And just return 16. Test are passing. OK, so now I've got something I can play with. And we can actually do some logic. So. If am if am pm equals pm, uh, our clock twelve. So we're we're gonna want to do an integer of our clock twelve plus. 12. New hour equals that.
and that's always going to be a string, right? Or it's always going to be, yeah, there's always going to be a leading zero in there because it's got, you're adding 12. Um, so if we string that and we return that, what happens? Goes boom. Uh, yep. I can see why that would explode. Test passed. Okay, so there we go. So we're returning our string for that. Else. Well, and actually, what? So can I add... Can I just put this... If it's PM, you add 12. If it's AM, you don't do anything to it. So 12 would get there. Oh, I need to figure out what I want to do with midnight or where that goes. Because 12 PM should just be 12. It shouldn't be 00. Or it should be 24. You know what's silly? Can you pass a specific format? How to format date time? Import date time, date time that print. Can you can you call in a specific format? that does the output, which is what we can use. I could, I could pull this. Whoa, where'd it go? Execute the following command to convert the string. Let's not call print on the date object print. Okay, wait, wait, so this is until we convert it to an actual date time. We can successfully do so by calling the strip time method. This is what I'm looking for. All right, we're going to make a scratch file. Oh, I, actually, you know what? Don't do that. Let's try, let's just do it in the test. Where you delete? Oh yeah, free factor, safe delete. Oh, I'm still probably gonna have to do my AUG. This is just safer, is basically instead of me having to do this logic, like somebody else has already done it. Um, I, I'll still have to probably do this, but that's fine. Um, All right. 
Actually, I do want to have a scratch file because I'm going to copy this out. Did that say new scratch file? Uh. Oh, look at this. That's kind of cool. High charm. So we're going to take our name. Why does it keep doing that? SDRP time. Now we just need to see all the now. Um... Now, what's the Nope. Probably the vacant stress date. Where's all the list of. I know I got it in here. somewhere. format time. That didn't go in there very well at all. Uh, I'll fix that later. Oh, months as local abbreviation. No, except I think some of these get four digit. Um, we'll check that because that may be what I can use. One full name. Uh, or the locales abbreviated name. Yeah. Um, where am I headed? I need a hour. No, so I need a month. Zero padded, so M. Day, zero padded. It's funny that they don't use something that shows you that it's zero padded. How we doing? Ten four. Hour. Twenty eight. 
12 hour clock, not zero padded. Oops. Bad directive, didn't like it, huh? What am I on? I'm on Python, right? I guess we'll have to see if that works. Okay, it goes even though it says it's zero padded. Okay, so it's smart. Uh, minute as a zero padded, which is that. Uh, 950. I don't care about the seconds, but we're going to grab them because it's the format and that's going to change. And then AM, PM. We're local. Nice. Yeah, this is much easier to do. Do. Uh, cool. Excuse me. We do this. Does that go to 21? Yep. Yeah. See, I don't have to do that math anymore. So we're going to put this in, rename screenshots. I like the froms below the imports. We're going to do this. It's our match. start replacing all that other stuff. Uh, and actually, we're going to pull original name in here. All right, we should still be passing. We haven't done anything yet. But now... Did I close it? I must have closed it. I did not mean to. I think st is Stack Abuse the one that steals everything from Stack Overflow? Nah, this looks like it's a real thing. Uh, microsecond state time, time. Uh, oh, we just want to print out, right? Import date time, certify time. Method uses longer date formats, saw before, year, month, day. Why don't you also just do its sprint of time, right? Or whatever.
Yeah, but how do we... Examples are based on date, date time, 9.30. That's not right. Oh, week number. Yeah, 30. Okay, right, right. Oh, there's a format code. It's the same thing. Uh, technical detail. Where's the... You just do... Should be 2002, 2020, whatever. Uh, I went quotes. I put in quotes. Show me 2020 here somewhere. Oh, I don't see it. What's going on now? Takes exactly two arguments, one was given. Strip time. Turn a date time corresponding to the date time according to the format. This is equivalent to time zone. I think I've got notes on this actually, hang on. the other way. Was I pulling in? I was pulling in instead of going the other way. I understand what's happening. Let's see if that's better. There's our date. Okay. So now we can do this. Path equals Alright, we're going to start here again, but we're going to do this below, because we want to save all that, so we should still be green. Yep. And we're going to pull this down here. Okay, yeah, yeah, so now we're using the much better thing. Um, like, I probably could have gotten that out all right, but like, it's nice to have somebody else doing all the logic. Month is a zero padded decimal, okay, that's what we want.
Yeah, the other one I want to see is... So let's do this. and the SDRP or whatever. The, I guess it's strip and stringify, I don't know. Uh, all right, progress. So the other one I wanna do is scratch file. User bin environment Python three seven import or from and from date time import date time is that what it was? <sighs> Python counts loop or range. Is there a range in Python? For I in range six. Do I get the start and stop or just stop? Start, stop. Step. I just want to print out all of the short abbreviations. So for I in range of 1 to 12, uh, date object equals date time. How do you make just a new date time with time today that's it date time dot date time I probably just need to do this Now we want to switch out the month with I. Yep. When do we arrive 679 to 11? Oh, uh, I guess it stops before you get there. Uh, what was the string? Beat. 
Ah, that's what I'm looking for. Three digits for three characters. That's perfect. Sweet. Yeah, and I don't have to do any calculation about math or whatever. Um, I can just do this. Oops, got to get to my tests. Hello tests, run tests, all pat tests passed. And just to make sure I'm in the right place, explode, good for you. AWS, and then, so now we're gonna do this again. Tests, I wanna, ooh, actually I'm gonna do, I need to test with a one digit month. Um, it should work, but I want to be explicit about that. Uh, same thing with the one digit uh, watchman thing here. You know what? I could just do that here in a minute. I could just change it because it's I can test everything at once. I don't need to make two different tests. Because like I trust that the two-digit numbers are going to show up. It's the zeros that I'm worried about. Um, all right, but what is day? Day. Zero padded. B it is. Test, good. All right, Give me your two digit hour. Hour 24, leaving zeros, H. Oh, nope, something exploded. Zero padded. M. Passing. Oh, here's where it gets interesting. That's that's fine for now. Oh, this is going to take longer than I thought because I have to do the logic to look at... Oh, I forgot about all this. Yeah, there's way more to this. That's okay. Um, no, I can do a simplified version of this. All right, so we're cool here, right? We've got all the test passing. So let's get rid of all the junk that we don't need. So we don't need this. Well, actually, let's do it this way. All right, here's the other path that we don't need, or paths that we don't need. So let's get rid of those to start with. Let's get rid of this. Still passing? Still passing. We can get rid of this now. Oops. To do check with, and then I stopped writing. It's always helpful. Still passing. So that's our first thing. Let's do this. Check 
one digit month. We're gonna do that in just a minute. So now we're just down to here, right? Returning our path. Now we can drop format number. Uh, let's make sure we kill the test. Actually, it's probably gonna explode, but that's okay. Test failed, okay, that's reassuring. Where's test hour adjustment? I didn't name that the same thing. I should've named it the same thing. All right, run all the tests. Ooh, one still failed. Rename screenshots. Wait, I just got rid of the wrong thing, didn't I? Final relative path. Oh, there were two hour adjustments. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, I'm back down to one test. This is awesome. Went way out, came way back. Now you can kill this. And now I can kill this. I kill this. Funny, this has taken like two hours to get here, but that's how it goes sometimes. Original name, and why is this in quotes? Wait, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the format. Right. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to commit this. Oh, we hadn't committed anything yet. Uh, how do we add that to the repo? Get. Add. Can I commit that file? Commit file. Initial commit. This, whoops, let's check out a branch. Uh, how do we check out a branch? Branches, new branch. Uh, whatever, I'm just gonna call it dev. this so that is the one two three four thing and it was the day which is this right still passing still passing okay all right so we got our basic path now we just need to all right, I want to go test with one digit. So I'm actually going to drop this because we've got that working. We're in this play now. So 09 September 09. I'm just going to change one thing at a time, which should just be this. Okay, that worked. 09, uh, and then we want to do this with 05. 05. And this will be 05. 
Make sure that still works. Okay, so we've tested with one digit, that works. Get rid of this now. So that gives us our path. Now the other thing that we need to do is Yeah, is we just need to look and see if there's already a file at that location. Um, at one point, I'd try to remove dupes, but I don't need to really do that with this. So this is just going to be file name base, relative file name base. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at a directory path. And if a file exists, we're going to increment. So we're going to get, I'm trying to figure out if this, if I, if I'm going to test this or if this is just testing like already tested stuff. do on a main up here. Um, trying to think, I want to restructure this just a little bit. Uh, really what I want to do is call this Screenshot renamer, R E N A M E R. Still trying to figure out how to like do modules and like all this stuff. Yes, please. And then, really, what I want is this code in here. Save that. Rename this. We're going to test screenshot renamer. And then in test screenshot renamer, we're going to call screenshot renamer. All right. Now, does this work now? Name screenshot this time. Oh, right, right, because right. we're it's called this now. Test passed. Okay. Reason I do that is I want to call this rename screenshots as the thing. So screenshot renamer is the code base, and then rename screenshots is going to be what actually does it um, or does the the work of it. I think that'll make it a little easier for me to test because I don't want to accidentally be in, like have the thing down at the bottom of screenshot renamer that says if main run and fired off. I want that completely separated. Um, so, rename screenshots, screenshot renamer, those duplets, so I can do this. Oops. Oh. Import screenshot renamer. And so this is where I got to figure out how I want to run this process. So I'm just going to start messing around with stuff. Let me get.
a few things up. Yeah, so it's just gonna be you're just gonna be looking at a bunch of screenshots. Yeah, I need to I need to test this. Um, Here. Ooh. I found something else. There's one of those too. With a print two after it. See, this is more complicated than I realized. Most of these screenshots are fine, I just can't read them from here, and so we're not going to do anything with them. This is boring. I recognize that. I could just duplicate the same file over and over since we're just looking at the file paths. What if we do that? Let me just look through here for a second and see if there's anything else that looks out of whack. No, it's that two is the only thing that looks out of whack. And then those are just the hour changes. Actually, what I want to do is do this, because we're going to want to have another one that's the same, but a second later. One more that's the same, a second later than that. We've got our two down here, and we want to have a version of that Oops. without the two. Now we can put a 10 in front of this, or a whatever. 
10, 15. Let's do a 10, we got a 10 p.m. Let's do a 12 p.m. Because what I can do is, and this is a little bit, I'm not sure the best, like, so what I could do is just feed this in as an array. But I like having these as the source files, so I can actually just loop over them. Um, yeah, I guess I can leave that one as the original. Um, Because I don't want to necessarily test the file system. But like some of this relies on the file system, right? So if like, it's just, I guess you could just check if a path exists, do an increment. Um, yeah, okay, and so... Really what I want to do is I need to pass a one in because I want the full path to be defined here. Screenshot renamer. be yeah let's keep it as a integer for that so now this should explode because the parameters are different now it should work and now we should be able to do uh is python sprint f that operator for that so that's digits see this reference for all supported formats let's do that that sounds like a good place to be conversion we pad it with numeric yeah so percent zero d is probably what it is oh what's the actual just do format and i just throw it straight in Format five. Uh, count. I gotta work. Nope. Oh, wait, percent. How do you put them in? Also use format. See this reference. Oh, wait, wait, hang on. Format five. Knowledge. One hello world. No, no, no. Uh, right. All right. We're just gonna do it this way. Uh, where'd it go? So we we'll just do this. Okay. 
account with that. We don't need the new line or the double quote. How about that? Ah, oh, crap. Aha, we need our zero. Oh, I thought that was going to be it. Two. Show me again the way that we pad zeros. Oh, maybe you gotta make it a string. I bet you gotta make it a string. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Half length. Format length three, length, format length equals That's cool. Oh yeah, here's I was gonna look and see. I, I just wanna see if this works. Present zero to well oh, string count. So I flipped it through a string. Zero two. That worked. Nope, didn't. Weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, where's our magic thing? One zero three. Oh, because we only need two. Passed. And then we want to put count in here. Uh, and actually what we should do is move this to a two and this to a two, just to test something that actually is going to have a change to it. So there's our path. That's our output path. So then... We're just going to loop over the file system. We're going to grab these. Then we're going to symbol our paths. We'll check if that file already exists, and if so, we'll go back and reassemble the path with the next number. Once we find a path that isn't there, we'll rename it, and then we'll change it. Yeah. This is actually a lot of time for not a lot of code. Um, right, so... I don't think <clears throat> I don't think there's anything else left to like test test. Now it's just kind of starting and going, right? Because there won't be do the rename. So what do we need? 
input directory. got to test that too. Crap. No, it's too dark. It's fine. Uh Okay, so how do I do delete files and directory, list files and directory, just glob, right? Yeah. Oops. Getting tired. Club. So this is where we don't need to test the file system. Like, I, glob is, if it doesn't work, then we're in trouble. So we're gonna get this with ping, because they're all pings. Yeah, I can just do this and just split. Okay, that's fine. Because I'm just expecting to pass the file name. Uh, and then I'll do the rest of the stuff there. So input directory. And then for... Yep. Let's just see if we got everything. Yeah, okay. So we've got them. Then new path or er, screenshot file name equals get. Do this screenshot paths paths path screenshot path split on that and we're gonna get the last one which I love being able to do that. We got that. Whoop. Screenshot paths is not behind. What? Ew, I spelled it wrong. Better? Better. All right, so now we get new screenshot path equals. Screenshot renamer. Get final relative bait. Uh, that's a long name, whatever. From.
screenshot file name one for now. We're gonna hard code that. Do this. Yep, explodes. Does not match format. Cool. Now we gotta test. Uh So with two, just right now. And so we're actually going to take this exact one that exploded. Oh, uh, no, we're not. We're going to do the same thing. So this test is going to explode. that explode because that didn't end up right. Error. Actual Python. I wanted that to actually tell me what the error is. Telling me what the actual error is. The other one, it said, you know, it didn't match the. Uh... Oh, it's here. It's in that. It's in that. Data string. Oh, unconverted data remains. Value error. Okay. Makes sense. So now again, what I'm going to do, I want to keep my I want to keep my working one working. Oh, don't go okay. Oops. Wait, what the hell's going on? Your name's going to trust you go away for a minute. All right, so I just want to I want to keep my working one working. I don't know if I got all that. Let's try it again. So we call this dev. I'm gonna start with I just want to get the test passing. So start with I'm just gonna explicitly pass this right back to it. Oh, it's not going to pass because it's blown up on the actual call. Wait, can I return this first? If I return it immediately. Test pass too. Okay, good. Yeah, so now I can come down here. This is gonna explode. But if we put this in, it should pass. Nope. Time data does not match format. That ping. Tesco. Oh, ping that two. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where does the two actually show up? It shows up in front, which makes sense. What I should really do, I'm going to do it this time. 
Let's copy one. So if all the rest of this code works, then it should work. 22. All right, we're just gonna get back to green. Come on. Our frustration. Okay, let me see this. 09, 05, 09, 05. 10, which is 22, 55, or give this one a 1. 1. Okay, that passed, but it shouldn't have. Oh yeah, it's doing the processing for this file to get back to that. I thought I was gonna have to hard code something, but the hard coding I had was is not necessary with this. Okay, so that's working. Uh, now we just have to make this work with both of them. Ah, tangled. And so I think the easiest way to do that would just be to strip those numbers. And I wonder... if you do a bunch, if that number increments. I'll bet it does. Hour, minute, second. Oh, no, so... It's got seconds in there, so it's unlikely to. I'm still gonna deal with it in case there's a three and a four. Uh, it seems unlikely, but we're gonna deal with that. So, mm, path ping. Right, it would have to match ping. Okay, that's fine. Um, So let's try this. Original file name. I just want to get a first version of this working. This is how you do that, right? So that shouldn't, whoops. Yeah, okay, so that's how you do the replace. So now, if we replace space that to bat, it's gonna fail. No, it didn't fail. Why didn't it fail? Oh. Right. Now it's gonna fail. Test failed. Value screenshot does not match format. Right. Oh, why does it have two pings? that out and put this here, what happens? Okay, I'm gonna bail. I'm not really sure what's going on right now. So we're gonna back this out. Actually, we're just gonna return this. I wanna get back to green real quick. It's weird that when you paste, it chomps down like that. Are we green? 
We're green. So get rid of this. And then just make sure all this is still working, right? Because we do this, we do this, it still works, right? Yes. So why didn't the other one work? Uh, I mean, we need to replace with a regular expression anyways. Which is substitute. So, I'm kind of remembering the stuff. Let's put it up. So, we're going to take our original name. Processed name equals. Regular expression substitute we need to escape those parens because parens mean something in regular expressions so we want to replace that and actually with a space I'm gonna do any number of spaces I think it's just one but we'll do that we want to get rid of all that from original name so I'm gonna run that just to see if that made something happen okay it did I should put this here. Nothing's happening. But if we take this out. Crap. Time data of that does not match format. Oh. Right. Because we need that to be gone. There we go. Yeah, so that's that chomps all that stuff. That's awesome. And now what we'll do is we'll just test all this by forwarding. Just to make sure everything's all the, they still pass. Yeah, so they all still pass. Right, cool. And so now we can back this off dev in the main. Call this old, but I'm just gonna delete it. That's probably a bad idea. And then call this that. And now we run our tests. Run all of our tests. Everything passes. So that's doing the, the chomp for it. Uh, cool, so now if we run, so let's commit that. Rename screenshots. Now if we run this, hopefully it doesn't explode. Yeah, there we go. So it does all our processing. And so now what we're looking at, right, is right here. Uh, I thought there was gonna be more. Oh, 422, 422, there's the two twos. Okay, yeah. So some of these are duplicates here. Do I have two that are duplicates? I don't remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah, because it's taken out the two. Okay, that's cool. So now's when we need to look at the file system um, and then make a determination of if a file exists. Cause I'm not gonna process, I'm gonna process these one at a time. I'm not gonna try and get the full list, do the comparisons, do the renames internally and then print out. So I gotta, I basically gotta look at the file system. Um, and so I need to move one first or I need to check and see if the file is there. And if it is, rename it. Or if it's not there, just use the first path. And if it is, if there is a file there, increment. So I don't really have a good way to do that without doing it. Um, and again, I'm on test data, but I'm just trying to think if there's yeah, I can't think of a way to like test that without testing it. Like I mean, there's probably some mock stuff or whatever. Um, Uh, 
unlock the file system. It's maybe something that I don't want to get in tonight, but... Third party, that party is Google. Okay. How to replace files from her. See how to replace file access references for a module under test. For discussions of use. Mocking. Model under testing mock is inconsistent. You're asking for a fake, something that behaves like a file system. Create up and delete files, but it's not actually the file system. In this case, it's the memory. All right, do we want to jump into it? Implement a fake file system that mocks the Python file system modules, including that your file system file takes in memory without touching real disk. This is super interesting. I'm not going to get into it tonight. Um, we're just gonna do it on test data, test files. All right, so we got our files. Check path equals Oops, backwards. We make emojis there. Uh, destination dir. Like this one. It's probably right. It is. And new screenshot path. So source, going to destination. All right. So check path equals destination path. For screenshot path. So really what I want to do is put the number stuff in here. Because I want to start counting before I get to this. Because that's where I'm passing the one. For I in range 1, 100, just to put a limit on it in case something goes to pay wire. Hide all this stuff for a minute. That's not a great one, but it's better than I. Uh, Python file exists. Oh, you know what I could do with my little link grabber? I could actually... You get credit for sharing links. I could actually update all the Stack Overflow links to put in my share ID. Let me do that. Uh, is file name. If the reason you're checking is so you can do something, like if file is open, it's safer to use try. If you're not planning to open the file immediately, you use is file. Return to files directory right path. Yep. That's what we want. Why 
that collapsed. If that uh yeah, so we're in the loop. Continue, right? Oops. If not, right. If it's there, wait. Why didn't that jump again? Oh, because it's not actually there. Right. So if it's there, it should jump back. We'll need to test this in a second. Actually, it's kind of going to test it for us, I guess. Otherwise, we'll do this, which is our copy. Oops, no, check path. Oh, wait, 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 hang on. New screenshot path. These are not great names. Uh, actually, we can do this. Don't do that. This, this. So we want to do the destination and then the rest of it. Whoops. Actually, we want that. We also want. Oh wait, we don't need the this one. Right, because we don't want to build a path once. And we need that to check it. Okay, yeah, this is right. Kinda would be nice to have that file mock thing. I'll build that in a minute. Cause like I don't know a way to test this. Like, it's got to touch the file system to check and see if the file exists. That's part of it. And, like, we're build it, we know we're building the paths. We've got the right thing here. We're filing on the range. Screenshot. Split. Grabs the end. I actually move that up. That only has to happen once. New screenshot path. So if screenshot path exists, break, right? Break may only occur syntactically nested in a for loop, but not nested in a function or class definition when in that loop. Terminates the nearest and closing loop. Skipping the optional else clause of loop has one, right? else break. Moving to new screenshot path. All right, what's this gonna do? Right, so all those would move. 
these would explode, but that should get caught here and go to a continue, which would give us a new number. So we can get rid of this. And this can go away. I mean, that's the logic. Rename. Oh, we've already got OS. Oh, we've got OS path. Whatever. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but we're going to do it that way. Yeah, I should just do this. So input screenshot paths. So we're gonna get our screenshot path. And our new screenshot path. Before we test this, we're gonna duplicate it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, see, this is where it'd be nice to have a test of like, here's the array of stuff to go in and here's the array of expected files. I'm just gonna eyeball it for now and hope, oh, no such directory. Oh crap, we gotta make the directory. Python directory name from file. OS path, their name path. Wait, you can use that. Return the directory name of path. This is the first element of the pair returned by passing the function to split. Full path, and you can split normally to get the last portion of the path, for example, base name. I mean, that's what we want, but that's kind of a weird. All right, so we've got that. Now we need to check the directory. exists. Is dirt. If not, output dir. I'm guessing it's OS make dir. Pretty sure I have this in my notes somewhere, but ah, make dirt P. It's actually what I'm after. Uh, 
path led path that make dirt. Okay. Uh, Python tree make durs has an optional third argument exists. Okay. When true enables make dirt p functionality, unless mode is provided and the existing directory has different permissions than the intended ones. In that case, OS errors raised to you. Okay, gotcha. So we should just be able to do this. If it's not there, make it. Sweet. And so what does this tell us? One already exists, two already exists. So it made us three. So that should be empty. And this 2020, October 15th. There's the three from September. Two of them at the same time. And then three at the same time. That's it. As far as I can tell, that's working. Yeah. Now obviously they're all the same file, but we're and I'm relying on the fact that the file names were changing. So how many how many files do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get rid of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, what? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know how that's possible. Oh, how is that possible? All right, stand by. Because we should see the same thing happen again, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whoops. Still got those as backup. I can probably look here. Okay, let's do it this way. gonna print out a little extra log here it's gonna show us exactly what's happening so it either exists or it moves from and it moves to I think right Let's see what happens Count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What the hell? Okay, yeah, I must, when I ran it the first time and it exploded, maybe something happened. Oh, I wonder if it moved one file and then crash? No, but it wouldn't have had the capability of doing that. I do not know.
I'm not overly worried about it though. Just run this one more time and make sure I'm not hallucinating right now. All right, do it. Whoops, nothing happened. Oh, we didn't reload it. All right, found two. Here, let's see if I can get this where I can see it. Oh, that didn't help. I don't like that it won't let me scroll while selecting. Come on. Come on. Crap. If I go up, does that work? That was complicated. Actually, we can do this. Copy, find, paste. Go away. Found, there's 422. Here's another 422. Here's it finding both of those again and doing the three. Here's running into a 255, which we just had there. Oh, and this is good because here's the one where it chopped the two. Okay, so that's expected. I think we're in good shape. Unless a magic eighth showed up again. Three. Four, five, six, seven. You know what I should have done? I should have copied that directory instead of blowing it away. Uh, but I'm kind of happy with that. That's awesome. Uh, that's good. I like this. Yeah, so all I have to do is target the actual directories here and fire it away and see what happens. It's not recursive. Is glob recursive? I don't think so. No, especially because I'm passing it the full path here, so it's not. Um, Yeah, that continue worked and the break worked and the making the directories worked. It's funny, it's basically all just one little method that took forever to build. Next time I build that, it'll be a lot faster. Uh, yeah, so that's it. I like it. So I the I want to have a launch D statement that runs this, um, but I will do that in another stream. And I think we're gonna call it uh, call it an evening. I'll uh, I'll commit this. Um, Version one working. Huzzah. I like it. Very cool. I'm excited about this. This will be a good uh, a good little addition. That's been something I've been after for a while. I just I don't like the way that the screenshots get or get named in uh, the Apple stuff. Uh, like the time's weird, and they put that t weird two at the end when you have two monitors, um, and it doesn't match my kind of existing structure so this will this will get me all lined up i love it uh cool and also it'll fail if it sees something it doesn't recognize which i like but i, I don't want it to try and do something crazy so that's also good i like it all right cool that'll do it uh y'all have a good one be kind and we'll see you next time